Yep, 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 yep. Hello and welcome to another episode of Finnish Football Shorts with me, Keke Mulari. In this series, Behind the Quarantine, we'll be taking a look at what all the people across Finnish football are doing to keep themselves busy while the world is on lockdown due to the coronavirus. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Hulke at the mid- defensive midfielder and AF Esberg captain, Markus Halsti. <laughs> It's my very great pleasure to introduce the um, Finnish national team player and AF Esberg captain, I believe, Markus Halsti. So, hello, Markus. Hi, Keith, and hi, everybody. It's um, very kind of you to speak to us today, Markus. So, thanks for that, first of all. No worries. It's, it's not like I'm too busy at the moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All of us football people are, um, are kind of have some spare time at the minute. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess everybody everybody in the in the whole world now has has a bit more time to be with the family and uh, yeah, maybe maybe even too much. Yes, so. that's it. Um, I myself have got uh, children at home, so we're doing homeschooling. So that's kind of challenging, but we're uh, making making the best of the situation. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So um, yeah. So everybody knows that. This um, this crazy situation we're in, we have to start somewhere, and it's it's due to this world global problem of the coronavirus outbreak, and um, everybody's in the same in the same situation. The uh, football across most of the world, I think nearly almost all of the world, has um, has been suspended. So I just wanted to ask you, um, due to the suspension of Danish Superliga, what um, what are you doing personally to? To make sure that you stay fit and and healthy, and um, is there any is there any fitness structure or strategy has been put in place from from your club Esberg? Well, many questions. So, so of course, yeah, as you say, the situation is is what it is, and and still that we are we football players are pretty blessed in in, in many ways, but but as you say, we uh, we need to we need to keep the eye on that when we start and. And I have no idea when Super League or is going to start, but when it starts, it's probably going to start like that. They just call us and and just say, mm. it. "Okay, guys, now we have tomorrow training, and maybe in a couple of days we actually have a game." Uh, so, so that that's that's the end, like that's the end goal that we always have in our mind, and and of course it's not easy to have that in your mind. But still, not to be able to, for example, use any gym. We we can't use anything here in Denmark. We can't. We can actually even call to our coaches, uh, to the club, as as uh, Esberg and I think I think many other Superliga teams. We're part of this uh, agreement with the government, where where the government pays uh, some percentage of okay. our salary yes. to the to the uh, to the team. So that makes us that we are on holiday. It mm-hmm. means that we're on holiday, and that means. That as we're on holiday, we can't have any contact with the team. Yep. So I see a question for some kind of uh, structure that we have get like some kind of fitness program. No, we got it. <laughs> we got a program on the same day as uh, that about a month ago. We got a program for one week. Okay. Because then, of course, the situation nobody knew. They were just like, okay, we'll see. Maybe it's one week and we're back. Yep. So basically, what we be doing is that one program. <laughs> I've been doing with with Yoni and some other guys. We've been just doing the one same program over and over <laughs> for weeks. Yeah, so I, I have to say that it's a uh, it could be worse, but uh, it, it, it's uh, getting a bit annoying, especially because most of those stuff that we have there includes the gym okay. that we should use the gym, and we can use as I say everything is closed here in Denmark. So mm-hmm. basically, we just we just go to the park. Me and Yoni Kauko. Yep. Who, who probably most of you guys know, of course. So yep. me and Yoni, we've been doing a lot of training together in the basically wherever we just can go. It's on the beach, it's on the park, <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, we just you know you just go out and you say, okay, just run there. Hmm, there's there's a hill. Why don't yeah. we do some runs on the hill? <laughs> okay. It's... And then next day we maybe do the same or some other stuff. Yeah, I've seen um I've seen some of your your videos in Instagram with. With you training with Jon Nikalka, and it looks looks like you guys are um, are managing to have some fun with it. There's, um, I guess, it's kind of competitive with Jonny as well. It's um, looks like you've been running some stairs and uh, yeah, running some hills and stuff. So I'm sure you guys are managing to stay fit. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I'm not going to say that we are as fit as we would be if we would train normally, normally with with the team, of course. Yeah. But at least we're trying to be the level that we can sure. we can be. As as I say, they they actually send us the, a memo that in it can honestly be, and this is from the from the sport direct also. He sent me a SMS that it can be that they just send us a message that hey guys, tomorrow is a training, and a day after tomorrow. You have a game. Okay, so... Ma- I mean I mean a Superliga game, not like a yeah. game. But it might be that we just go from zero to, yeah, 100. Yeah. So maybe the, the match fitness is not quite so sharp, but at least you will you will have some... Uh, you've had some air in your lungs, so you can get going from somewhere. But I guess all the teams are in the same situation, so it's like a, a clean starting point. Everybody's everybody's there. So I guess um, there's some some something to be said for that. Yeah, yeah, it, it's exactly what you say. Everybody is on the same, so we we can't really. You can't complain. You just we just do our job, and yeah. you know, the days go by, and then we just have to hope that this this whole situation will, of course, uh, turn better. And in actually in Denmark, it it looks a bit better now. But I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I can't say anything about the virus, but at least looking at the press conferences, mm-hmm. they they say that it, it's it's uh, looking better now here. Yeah, I I read myself just today that maybe some of the lockdown restrictions that um that are in place in Denmark maybe relaxed a little bit and I I think that's because one of Denmark was one of the first countries to actually put those restrictions in place so maybe they um they did the right thing and now they're able to relax that a little bit but um yeah we hope we hope for that because of course for me and for Joni and, and rest of the the players, I can only talk about the players. Of course, the, the best thing is to play football, and, and yeah. uh, it would be nice also to play football and give something for the fans. I mean, they can't come to the stadium. We're gonna, we're gonna, if we're gonna continue the league as as everywhere probably, we're gonna play for the next months at least without the audience. So, but sure. at least they can they can watch us on the TV. So mm-hmm. that that's something. So that that brings me on to my next question, Marcus. Um, you know, you said you're not quite sure, but maybe Superliga will will continue. Maybe you are able to complete the rest of the games behind closed doors in a in a closed stadium. But you know, the various football leagues across Europe and in the wider world are are starting to have discussions if if the 2019 2020 season will actually be completed. Um, you know, in in I'm based here in England, and there's lots of talk that Liverpool should be crowned champions because they had such a great season so far, and with this amazing points tally that they've they've gained, and it looks like nobody would ever catch them. So, so that's that's uh, what people are talking about. What do you think that the seasons across Europe will be completed, or do you hope that they are? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, I hope without taking any any risk with the medical side. But mm. if we just talk about the football side now, I, uh, side, of course, I hope that as as probably everybody hopes that it will be decided on the pitch, not on the not on the uh, on the boards. Sure. Even that it's it's, uh, it's it's for example in England, it looks pretty pretty solid for Liverpool mm. that they're going to win it. But but uh, no, of course, I would hope that here in Denmark. Uh, if you just if you just take actually our situation in Esper, we are second last at the league. Yeah. Uh, which there's different uh, possibilities that I haven't heard, but one of the possibilities would just be that okay, you just you just do it that the two last teams they just go down and uh, <laughs> that's it. Okay. Uh, okay. The one also is that maybe they just do it like that. The whole season is basically you just you just pick up the winner. Yep. and then nobody goes down. Okay, but I I would say that of course everybody would hope that we can we can solve it in the field yes. to play against each other. We still have actually in Denmark we still have uh, over ten games left. So so it's 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 quite a lot of games left. So uh, there's uh, there's definitely uh, a big hope in in Denmark at least now. What I'll be reading that that we can we can play somehow we can play the season finished on on the pitch yeah that's that, that's a big big uh, possibility now that's that's good and obviously that's that's the best way we we want to see the the seasons are finished in the football pitch like you say and and not decided for some some votes or in in some boardroom somewhere i mean um even you know you said yourself that esberg are, are sitting in second last and 
last season you had such a, a fantastic season. I think you came in third place and and made some European qualification, was it? But um, this season hasn't really gone to plan. So I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking maybe it would be nice, not nice, but you know, if you could just say, okay, we're just going to scrap this season. But but it's you know, if t- you have ten games left, you guys have the chance to turn turn it around and maybe. This little rest has um, has done you some good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't, I don't even want to go to that. <laughs> I have so many questions. You can think about how many questions I have had as yeah. a captain. That what what happened? Like last year, this, and now you're here. Yeah, okay. We haven't had that good season. I can, I can uh, admit it, and mm. everybody can see it. But uh, joke aside, so of course this this break, it's it's like a new start. Yeah. So it's it's new start for everybody, and and when you see how. When you just see how we played before the before we actually cancelled, we we weren't playing good. So, yeah, if if I should find something positive here in this whole yeah. Corona crisis, is is of course that maybe we get like a clean slate. Maybe we can just start it. Uh, not meaning that we would end the season. No, I'm just meaning that when we yeah. when go we back start fresh, start go the, yeah exactly, and then uh, have have the last ten or whatever the games we left. To do everything and and hopefully we will stay in the league. Yeah, I hope uh, so too. Uh. <laughs> so um, away from Esberg, you've um, you've travelled a little bit across Scandinavia. You've played for a few clubs in in Scandinavia and um, Sweden, Finland, and now Denmark. A couple of clubs there, and um, also everybody remembers that you had uh, a little time in North America in MLS. You. Um, you seem to, from your social media, you seem to have kept a good relationship with the clubs you have re- represented in the past, and um, particularly Malmo and Hoyikor. Do you um, do you feel some special affinity with the, these clubs and their fans, or is, do you have a, a good relationship with every club you've represented? Uh, yeah, when just just going back to the question about Malmo and, and HK, of course, those are the two special clubs for me. In, mm. in HK, I. I I joined the HJK when I was probably 12, 13 from uh, Vuasare Viking is from yep. uh, Eastern Finland, uh, Eastern Helsinki. Uh, and then from HJK I played until I was uh, what 23. So it's it's many years and there there basically I I I beginning I I how would I say I grow as a football player a lot sure. and I that was the first step and the second step I took in Malmo where I was uh, seven what seven and a half eight years mm-hmm. so those two clubs have uh, have a very special connection to me for me at least and I'm 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 glad to see also that the, the fans still remember me yeah. even that uh, especially in HJK I was a bit uh, the whole when I've been thinking about it a lot. Of course, it's when you get older, you know, you start to think about all the mistakes or whatever you have done in the past. And in HJK, the time was I uh, had so many injuries that uh, I had four, what four years in a row, I, I broken my, uh, I had a Jones fracture, so I was away for like what, like five months? Nah, mm-hmm. maybe not four years in a row, but many, many years. I had a, I had a big, big problems with the injuries in HJK, and that. Now, when seeing it, of course, that somehow reflects that for me, the memories were good, but they could have been better. Yeah. You know what I mean? As in Malmo, of course, we, we basically then we achieved almost everything we can achieve in Scandinavian club without yeah. going through in a, in a Champions League group, group stage. But, but I had some amazing uh, games in Malmo, especially. And uh, yeah, those two teams will always be special for me nice so if you if we talk about um quickly mls um how was that experience and how are the, how are the fans there are are those american guys as fanatical as as the fans in europe or is is it kind of different well i have to say i was i was really really positively uh, surprised about the fans uh when you go to us you know of course the first thing what you always hear i also i can i can say as so many so many guys called me my friends called me everybody was like what are you doing man why you yeah. go to mls it's not even a league <laughs> do they play football like what you go to states yeah i saw you what man football why do you go there i went there and uh, i think the average in dc where we had the old we had a big big stadium 50 something thousand but it was average only like eight only 18 okay. or something. And I say only 18, you understand that it's a bit of a uh, sarcastic because, yeah, 18 is pretty, it's pretty much, you know. Mm. Uh, and the fans, they could make a lot of noise. We had actually a lot of, lot of the fans, the two biggest fan bases, uh, 
I don't remember, but but something, and uh, I remember the other one. They have a lot of uh, people from uh, South America, so okay. you can understand they yeah. they love football. They like they love football. It's really a really really big thing for them. So saying that, comparing that them to Europe, I, I can't say that they are less or that they are better or whatever. It's 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 a good. The culture is uh, it's not of course that. The culture is not that, uh, like the teams are about 20 years old or something. So the football culture is not that, that massive in mm. that way. But yeah, for sure, they are good fans that they can keep noise. And uh, there, there's then, then there's the show part, you know, the show stuff that, <laughs> for example, I always tell the story. I went to Portland. We went to Portland and I, I took our uh, corners. <laughs> yeah. So I took the corners of our team and <laughs> suddenly there's a guy behind me and the team is uh, Portland Timbers. Yep. So there's a guy behind me, and I'm not kidding. You can just go. Everybody can go to YouTube and see this guy. So he's pretty famous. And suddenly, somebody has uh, like a proper uh, mod. How do what do you say? Motor chain? Like yeah, cutting, chainsaw. Uh, like proper, yeah, chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's like putting <laughs> behind me. <laughs> I'm just utterly. It's like five meters from me, and I'm just checking. Like, is this seriously? Like, I mean, we are states. I know everything is big here, yeah. but this guy is seriously doing that. I'm taking a corner, you know, I mean, okay. this is a game. It's not like a, so, it, so it, you have to understand that, uh, that's the show part of it. And that's yeah. the business show business. And that's of that, that of course is American. That's, that's mm. in everywhere there. That's you, you go to see NBA, you go to see NFL, you go to see NHL. It, it's, it's there. That's just how they are. So when you understand it, for me, it was just after the first shock, <laughs> after the first seconds, I was like, okay, that's actually pretty cool, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so I was, I was and the league itself. It's it's hard to everybody who play in MLS. They get so many questions about it. The European players, okay, what's the level? Mm. How do you compare the level? And this, it's so hard to compare because you have a mix of everything in MLS. You have so many players, really, really good players from Europe, maybe a little bit older ones. Then you have a really good player from South America. Then you have a players from the college, which yep. are there because they have the budget. They don't have. They don't, it's not like Barcelona and Real in La Liga, mm. and then you have the lower teams. Every team have the same budget, except the designated players. So, so you have the differences inside the teams already are really big, and yeah. then there might be differences with everything in the in the league. But I I I, I saw it as as a chance, and I was happy that I I took the step there. I was a bit unfortunate. I had a too big uh, knee. Uh, uh, two times MCL. Okay. I broke my MCL two times. When I went there, I trained uh, one month. Just when I went there, after a month, boom. And oh. I was away three and a half months and came back. And then exactly the same in the next preseason. And when it happened, the team just say, listen, you know, this, this is what's going to happen now. We're going to have a new player in your in your place. Oh. And because of the budget, you know, th th this is that's how it goes there. You know, yeah. you just... So, uh yeah, but otherwise, I mean, I, I got, we get, our second children was born in DC and the time mm. there was fun and the, the culture of actually what I love the most, now it's a long story, but sorry about it, but That's what I love so the most is that the culture of the American, the players, they never complain. You know, we had a meeting, we had a meeting like 10, you go there, you thought like, oh, I'm a bit early now, I'm like half nine and there's everybody in the gym. <laughs> Doing, doing. There's no, there's no trainers. It's not like that. They have to be there. Yeah. They there because they want to get better. They want to show. They want to show for the trainer, the listen trainer. I'm not playing now because you think I'm not good enough. But mm. I will make you believe that I will work as hard as I can. To that you can show that okay, give this guy a chance. And I, this is my personal, uh, how I think. But I think in European. Players, we can actually learn a lot of that American yeah. culture of doing uh, things, especially in the sports. So, they're, so they're, uh, they have a good attitude. Their attitude is, is really good. It's really good, yeah. Mm. No complaining, going hard, a bit too hard. Sometimes you yeah. get to know it. Uh, okay, now if somebody listens and say, okay, you know why they're doing it? Because it's same in every, basically in every job in the US, you know, you, you don't have that good protection. They can just, in, in football, yeah. so I saw it many times that, Friend, they just player came to me after the breakfast. Oh, listen, it was nice to it was nice to meet you. I was like, okay, but wait, what? Yeah, they trade me or they just release me. And the release is 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 the worst because when they release a player, a young player, especially from the college, they have nothing. Yeah. So they just I talk with them. Okay, what do you do now? I, I don't know. I just 
I, um, I go home. I go home with my parents. I, I can't live anywhere, but you know, it, it's cool. <laughs> this is football. Yeah. Oh dear. And it, it's amazing. They just they just took it like you know nothing. This this happens in life. Just mm. you know, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody have, and that's not even their mistake. They just you know. Yeah. No, it's they nice. Can rise up again. That's nice to hear. That's really great to hear that they have such a good work ethic and a and a, and a good attitude. So um, I want to talk to you about playing for Finland, Markus, if you if you don't mind. Um, you've, you've you've played a fair few games and been involved in a few squads for national team. It must be, you know, when you first get that phone call or message that you are joining up with your national team. I I can't even imagine the feeling. It must be like something something unbelievable. But I just wanted to ask you. Um, do you have a, do you have a best moment of your Finland career so far? I um I remember watching the um the game that became known as the miracle of Hihoin when we played against Spain and I think you came as a late substitute in that game so that must have been pretty cool to be, to be on the pitch when that final whistle was blown. No, of course, yeah, yeah, it was it was amazing, amazing, and I can still remember the goal. Our, I mean, our goal. It was amazing goal <laughs> from uh, how we built it up. Then played in, uh, I think Moisan they played to was it to Ring? Yeah. And he played. Was it to Pera or somebody who played on the on the side? And there are early cross in, and uh, yeah. Then we have our magic man. The goal. Scored the goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it, it was it was amazing. The, I don't know if I should say this, but I have to say the <laughs> one thing that actually a little bit annoys me from that game is that uh, we already already I talk up with uh, Xavier Alonso that we're gonna we're gonna change the shirt after the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went in. We were both uh, warming because he was on the bench. So I was warming up with him, and we just uh, yeah, okay. We do it after the game, and okay. Then the game ended one one, and uh, we were really happy. Of course, we were happy. I mean, it's Spain. They, yeah. I think they they lost like they had played like what I don't know fifty games in a row in a home without losing a point or something mm-hmm. like this in the Euro, in the in the qualification. And then after the game, you go to change the shirt, and they're like, nobody, nobody can change the shirt now for <laughs> Spain. Oh, and I was like, dear. seriously? And, and th- that moment, you know, that moment is still in my mind that we are like probably five, four, I don't know how many guys we were there, the Finnish guys. We yeah. like, honestly, this might be a shock to, to many of the listeners, but this happens a lot that you have maybe yeah, a lot of the guys, they just wait outside the, another locker room to to, t- to change the shirts. Yeah. And that moment you feel like, you know, 10 year old. Yeah. You're like, Oh my God! There's like there's like Ramos. There's like we yeah. just played against them. They're not that big, you know. They they're not they're nothing special. Okay, yeah. special, but they're not like superhuman. And especially and when you you there, just got like, a result oh. against them as well. Yeah, and then the, I think some guy just came to say that sorry, no shirts. Ah, uh, no, that that was special. But of course, for me also the one of the most special was I still remember the first game. Yeah, uh, we played in Cyprus against Greece. Uh, we lost it actually, but. Especially the moment when uh, Lead Money was playing in the team, and and you had these guys, you know, that you always look up when you were young and getting yeah. getting uh, after, what fifteen, about fifteen, sixteen, when when I really started to see football as okay, this might be my career and this might be my future. Then then you you look up these guys and you get to play with them, and it's always it's always so special. So for me, the first game, like probably a many many other. Other players have it. It's 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 a special one in the finish shirt. Mm. And you um you were also uh, in in the squads that did so well in the the first ever Nations League tournament. Um, do you think that you know we've we just we're going to talk about the Euro qualification, but do you think that the the the, the team spirit that was and the the winning the winning mentality that was made in that Nations League campaign? Do you think that has helped? Finland in in the the European qualification. I think absolutely. I, I think it it it. Uh, how would you say it? I mean, it it laid the ground, the foundation. It laid the foundation to the Euro success that we yeah. had to the qualification. I think the way we played in Nations League was exactly the same how we played played in the in the Euro. Even that opponent started to be better, but we realized in, in the Nations League that. This is how we should play. This is our in the, in, in our DNA. Yeah. This is what we're good at. We don't need to do any magic tricks. We learn what the opponent will do. We train how we manage to keep the opponent away from our goal, and and then we create the chance at what we create. Of course, to have the goal again 
uh, in the offense, it helps. But generally, like when you see how the team, the team played, how the team defended, how the team, yep. everything just clicked. And I, I would say the the Nations League helped to create that whole atmosphere for the upcoming success that that the team had in the, in the Euro. Mm. So you know we we waited a long time for that and and finally <laughs> finally Finland qualified for the first ever major tournament finals in what was supposed to be Euro 2020 but we have to mention this damn virus again you um you know they uh, because of because of the the world situation UEFA has decided to postpone those finals until um 2021 I guess it's the only sensible decision but um are you able to tell us about how you felt about the the feeling when we qualified that night against Liechtenstein in Helsinki, and and also how you feel about the finals being postponed? Yeah, well, first of all, of course, the feeling the feeling in in Helsinki. I was there actually. I I flew to watch the game, and I was lucky to to get a get a ticket because mm. I was doing some uh, some work for the at the same time. So so the feeling was it was it was pretty amazing feeling because from the morning. When you wake up on that Friday, it was Friday, right? Yeah, it was. I'm correct, yeah. Yep. On that Friday, I woke up and and it was just I don't know. I, it was just so easy feeling that okay, this is this is going to happen easily. The guys will. It, this is easy, <laughs> you know. The guys will fix it. And everybody, honestly, everybody that I talked with, they were just like, "Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say it. We we will fight it off. Sure, sure. This we will fight it off. Mm. Something will happen. Come on, listen, guys. It's Luxembourg. Yeah, yeah." It's not going to happen, you know. This is this. this something's going to happen. Even though we take two red cards, I was like, "Listen, guys, <laughs> it's it's and 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 why I felt it, it's actually the the feeling when you watch the games through the whole whole collocation. It's, yep. it's it's just like the harmonic that everything works so good together. You have team in uh, you have Sparv in, in, in the midfield with Glenn, you know. Yeah, it's like con- the combination with those two. It's like the combination in the whole pitch. With with the center backs, with everything, it it it's there, you know. It's just and and then of course when the first goal came, you're just like, hmm, okay, maybe I can take a beer now. Maybe I can ah, maybe not yet. <laughs> Second goal, yeah, yeah. Then it was a beer time, you know, and uh, yeah. it, it was amazing. But it's always the feeling like as a player, I had of course I didn't have the same feeling now when I when I wasn't there with them, but but it's just like. When you when you actually understand, and I talk with a lot of the guys, you don't actually understand what you achieve at that moment. Mm. Of course, like you see from the pictures from Paulus and all these guys, I mean, they they, they were crying almost at this. So, of course, in that way, you a little bit maybe understand what you just did or what the guys just did. It, but 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 it, it's that moment will uh, for sure, especially the players, but also us fans who, who watch the whole journey that whole year. It's a year that we will, yeah. I, I will never gonna forget that night. It was, it was amazing. The whole, the whole, uh, the whole trip, the whole journey that that brought us to that uh, that night. So it was, ah, uh, yeah, it, it's something amazing. It's still, it's amazing to talk about it. You know, it's, mm. it's nice. You get the, uh, you yeah. get, you still get the butterflies when you when you talk about it. It was, it, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was uh, such a such an amazing night, and I think. I think we had already some beers for breakfast. We were we were already nervous. We were, you know, you said that <laughs> some people. Oh, I didn't think that we would fight it off, but I I wasn't prepared to say okay, it's going to happen. It, I was, you know, ca- being a bit more cautious than that. And we we had a couple of beers through the day just to calm the nerves, and and then oh, it was so good. It was so good. And just uh, celebrating on the pitch with the guys after the game, it was the best. Yeah, you managed to run. Of course yeah, of run course, there. we were there on the pitch. Yeah, I don't think there was anybody left in the stands after. Yeah, yeah I was actually a bit unlucky in that way. I was, I was, uh, I promised to do an interview with uh, Ulysses Radio, so <laughs> okay. I didn't, I didn't see the end, the, the end, a minute. So I wasn't on the on the pitch on that way. But uh, no, no, it, it, it was it was a crazy night, and it, it continued a crazy night of, after. But that's <laughs> another story. Indeed. Uh, but about the Euro, no, I mean, and I think all when I'm watching the interviews from Luke and everybody, the players, what they have said, it, mm. it's, you know, guys, and, and the fans have been great. I mean, it's the players, we all the players, all the Finnish players who ever were in the jersey before this happened. Yep. 
and all the fans, I think we can still wait for one year. Exactly. And, uh, and it, it's, it's been amazing to, to see. I've been also around the national team now, God knows uh, how long, 12 a years. few years, yeah. Pretty much 12 years, yeah, over 10 years at least. And, and to see the, 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 the appreciation that even in tough times in Iceland, for example, that's probably my worst memory. Yep. I was as, there as, also. As, uh, yeah. So we still we still get the the fans were behind us and and now to I can say that I I did something but to feel I feel all the guys basically on the team and and when I say this I know that they they feel that they they give they they did this for the fans and for the Finnish Finnish uh, all SME Eco and all these guys and girls who've been following them and all the young players mm-hmm. who are following the the guys and and I think everybody can still wait for one more year. Yep. Also the players. So uh, just hope that everybody will get fit or will stay fit now. Yep. Uh, for for the next year, that's of course the biggest, uh, biggest, biggest. Uh, what do you say? Hoping for. Yeah, it. yeah. So you you must have been excited yourself being being based in in Denmark. You know the um, the first game was in was planned to be in Copenhagen against Denmark. That must have been pretty exciting for you I'm sure you would have planned to be there whether that would be part of the squad or as a supporter you know it um it must have been uh, uh exciting for that that thought but do you think that the group we are in with Denmark Russia and Belgium do you think that we have we have a, a chance to to progress from that group yeah, it's gonna be hard to be honest <laughs> but uh for sure I mean for sure if we now, now I have no idea what what's going to happen next year. Do we play in the same order? Yeah. But but especially when when we see Denmark, I mean now they're going to have a new trainer. Mm. Uh, they're going to have, uh, but but they they have amazing track record. When you see how they have like what thirty games in a row without without a loss. Well, that's that said. Now, also Denmark is a team that they have a lot of good quality and this, but but they. When I watch the games, of course I'll be following the Danish football here. Yeah, I think I think that we had a good chance to play the first game, especially the first game against Denmark to mm. surpri- surprise them in that first game. I think we had we had a good chance, and yeah. we hopefully we'll have that next year. Now I don't know what's going to happen. I read something that maybe they don't play in the same cities or whatever, but I I for sure there is because I mean you have you don't have that many games when you actually are in the Euros. Yep. So the first game, for example, let's say you surprise, or at least just just zero zero game. Mm-hmm. Finland, we we can go now to the Euros without any pressure. The other teams have the pressure, so yeah. so we can be relaxed and this. So I think I think and I believe that we have a chance to surprise. Even though it's going to be, yeah, difficult. It's, there, there's all the opponents in Euros are good. All the teams are good there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a tough group, but you know I think. There's games that are are winnable, and you know anything can happen on the on the pitch. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna hope that we are uh, we we can progress. But if if not, it's just gonna be so so great to be there when it eventually happens and and cheer the guys. So if Rive calls, you're available, are you, Marco? Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm doing stuff every day. Yeah. Uh, if he calls, but uh, yeah, yeah. If he calls, I'm I'm always available. That's so, good. Uh, We'll see. Yeah, we'll I'm see. Only, I'm only 36, you know. <laughs> yep. I have a plain, plenty of uh, playing games, plain, play, playing years mm-hmm. in front of me still. So, and <laughs> you, and what what um so the future for you, Marcus? What what happens when those those playing years do eventually come to an end? Do you do you hope to stay in football? Will you will you like to coach or or what what are your plans? Well, I don't have any any exact plans. I'm just studying a little bit uh, sport management to mm-hmm. uh, to somehow my dream is somehow to be involved in football. Is that or sports generally? It doesn't have to be football, but in sport because of course that's that's in my blood. I mean, I'm in in the sports industry for uh, yeah. yeah so many years. So somehow in it uh, as a trainer, as a coach, I'm not that sure. Maybe, but at least now I'm not actively seeking. On that career, mm. uh, but maybe someday. You never know. I like to talk, as you can see. I, li- I like. To, yeah. uh, I like to tackle stuff a lot than this. Well, actually, a lot of the guys have been saying to me, you know, why I just don't quit already and start to train because that's how I'm, I'm into training. Just ask Kauko. Yeah. Just say, I'm, I'm always talking. You know, just shut up for a moment. Uh, <laughs> but I, I love to be coach. Uh, but uh, we'll see what the 
future brings to me. But uh, for now, at least, I'm still uh, okay. For now, I'm just enjoying my time with my family. But yeah. generally, now it, it's uh, enjoying the time with uh, playing football. Good. When we will hopefully will be back. To yeah. Play. Okay, Marcus. Well, um, thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us and and share your thoughts with what's happening at the moment and um, and the wider world of of football and your experiences. Um, yeah, I just want to say again a big, big thank you for that. No worries. Thanks. Now I'm going to build uh, again some Legos with my kids. So uh, <laughs> it was good to get some break, break from that also, you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, listen, stay safe there in Denmark and all the best for Esberg when, when the season does continue. And um, I'll be watching you and Yoni and um, Purisori, of course, and hoping that you guys can uh, can remain in Superliga. Thank you. We do everything to, to, to achieve that. Lovely. Okay. Nice to talk to you, Marcus. Goodbye. Stay safe for everybody also. Thank Bye. you. Bye bye. Well, that was AF Esberg captain and Hawkey at defensive midfielder Marcus Halsty. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and visit our website, finishfootballshow.com. I've been your host, Keke Mulleri. Thanks for joining us. Yep, yep.